We're interviewing, we're privileged to have Kareem Jaboa uh, from Cisco Entrepreneur Institute, who lives between Dubai and Orlando, Florida. Kareem is a valued partner of WAMDA. Cisco Entrepreneur Institute has a long-standing record of commitment to entrepreneurs and is, it's a subject that's deeply embedded in the company's fabric and vision. Uh, a deep content pool and a lot of value through an active workshopping and partnering process. So what we're going to do is talk to Kareem and get him to take us through that. So Kareem, good afternoon. If you can just really take us through the vision Cisco has for entrepreneurship on a global basis, uh, what the key fundamentals are of that, how the execution works, and then we'll start talking about the region. Wonderful. Thanks, Avais. So uh, the Cisco Entrepreneur Institute is a four years old initiative uh, which was launched by Cisco for the purpose of having a direct impact on societies and economies uh, by targeting one of the most important segments in any economy, which is the entrepreneurs in general. And the vision of the Cisco Entrepreneur Institute is really to work and collaborate with the private and public sector of any given country to harness the power of entrepreneurship by the way of providing this kind of uh, entrepreneurship knowledge to entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs to be on a, a, a platform that provides them with a, a blended way of learning, which is access to online content, videos on demand, as well as facilitation both in person and via collaboration tools called WebEx, which is one of Cisco uh, products. And the way we operate is basically working with, as I said, private and public sector entities and open training centers. We train them how to use the entire system. We train them as well how to localize the content, which is key, because we'd like to make sure that the content is relevant to the audience, as well as you know, uh, managing the videos, translating, etc., etc. Those training centers could be a university, chamber of commerce, or just a private company, will then go on and open what we call local institute, where they would be working directly with entrepreneurs in the field. And just to, to give a bit, bit, bit more background, what are, the, what are the key challenges that you encounter that entrepreneurs face early stage, pre-VC? What are the key common factors that you think come up globally? You know, uh, it, it's a bit hectic, but you said common factors. There are a certain number of common factors that we have seen so far. Well, entrepreneurs in general are challenged by one major thing is most of them have an idea they would like to go for it, but not ready in terms of business acumen. So despite the fact that sometimes the legal uh, framework in which they evolve and eventually lack of resources in terms of finance and money, but it's also a lack of really true understanding of business uh, practices and insight knowledge of entrepreneurship business practices, as well as the use of technology to their profit. So this is basically what we believe are the two main elements that cause the failure of an entrepreneur, not knowing exactly the way or how to go by in terms of business practices and using the technology properly. And do you find that that factor is more pronounced in developing markets than the US, or how, how do you find that shifts globally? Well, th there is uh, some sort of differences, of course, uh, especially, you know, access to technology, like access to bandwidth, if they want to use technology in terms of uh, uh, internet tools, for instance. But um, in terms of knowledge, one of the interesting trends that we see today is some of them, those who have access to internet, have access also to knowledge globally. You'll be, you'll be surprised to find an entrepreneur from an emerging country having very advanced ideas in what they want to do, very similar to what they have elsewhere in the world. But the divide between both of them is the same old divide that we've seen in the past economically. So there are challenges for the emerging market due to the situation in their countries. Also, access to technology, as I said, by financial and mentorship and eventually opportunities. Those are mainly the main challenges that differentiate them from others. Sure. And from Cisco's perspective, what are the main challenges that you find in the Middle East, North Africa region? The challenges, um, well, actually, they're good challenges. They're not challenges as per se in a sense that they're an obstacle. We are learning as we go. For instance, we had to translate the content for some countries where speaking you know, uh, other languages than English. 
maybe what we need right now is to have more time to have people absorb the idea of what we're trying to do here. Because the key to our success is that we believe in the human network. We believe that we can only succeed by having access to this wide network of partnership whether locally, regionally, or global level, ultimately. So the challenge right now is to really go step by step and find the right and appropriate key players in the ecosystem to help us promote what we're trying to do here. And you talked about ecosystem. Ecosystem is a, f a word that keeps cropping up in entrepreneurial kind of discussion, which is how do you create uh, an entrepreneurial culture when there are so many factors that contribute. Can you talk about that for a second? So the, the facts, and you're mentioning the facts, which is important, which are translated into information, is actually what we're trying to gap here. We know that there are so many entities, whether private and public, who have the goodwill and good intention to promote entrepreneurship. But the problem is sometimes they don't know how to promote that information or to share it. And this is where we come into play. If you look at the Cisco Entrepreneur Institute system, or the way of learning, which is, as I said, blended way of learning, is very much built on this concept of how to reach out to people and collaborate, help them collaborate and connect each other. And this is actually the very, uh, the, you know, the very essence of what Cisco does, which is collaborative technology and technology at large. So in the ecosystem, what we believe is missing today is this communication between the different parties, starting from the local perspective and then regionally and then globally. And we would like to be uh, sort of in the middle and play that missing link. Got it. And one final question. Tell us about what... Um what your dream is for, for entrepreneurship? What, what makes you personally committed to this cause? It is certainly the ambition of knowing that whatever I do today will impact somebody somewhere, maybe in a family, maybe in a village, maybe in a city, maybe in an entire country, I don't know. But all I can say is what I do today is a job that makes sense. It's not just a job that I label it, I got my salary, whatever. I really enjoy and love doing it, specifically because I deal with the most important thing in today's reality, and that's diversity. I meet people from different cultures, from different perspectives, and my aim here is to really kind of give back to them and help them be successful. And this is my motivation after my family. Fantastic. That's great. Thank you, Kareem. Thank you.